Did you know that you can extract DNA in your kitchen? Or that you can make a non-Newtonian fluid from supplies in your pantry? Or that you can do chromatography using materials from your hall closet? Welcome to the Teaching Science at Home Show. I'm Paige Hudson, and today we're breaking down the complexities of teaching science into building blocks you can use at your home. A fully stocked science lab is packed with expensive equipment and really dangerous chemicals, which is not something we can really replicate in our homes. But with a little bit of magic from our kitchen and the hall closet and probably the laundry room too, we can make some really cool science experiments in our homes. Today we're going to chat about how we can use our kitchens as our science labs. First of all, you can raid your cups and dishes, things like coffee cups, bowls, and ball jars for your glassware. You can use straws as pipettes, and your coffee filters can double as filter paper for your chromatography experiment. In your kitchen, you can find many chemicals sitting on your pantry shelf. Now granted, these are weaker and a bit safer than their lab counterparts, but still we can do lots of acid-base experiments and make crystals on our kitchen countertop. So if you want to use an acid from your, chem from your kitchen, things like lemon juice or soda or vinegar. Bases, you can find like baking soda, ammonia, and bleach. And you can make an indicator from cranberry juice or red cabbage juice. That is if you don't want to stink mind stinking up your kitchen a bit when you cook the cabbage. You can make crystals from salt, from sugar, from borax and Epsom salts. You can make a battery out of a lemon and a potato. And you can make your own polymers at home. You mix borax, water, and glue, or you can mix cornstarch, a little bit of oil, and some water and heat it up, and you can make your own bioplastic in your microwave. What about purchasing that expensive equipment? Well, the one piece of equipment that I recommend you investing in as a homeschooler is a microscope. And when purchasing for a microscope, you're looking for a couple of things. You're looking for a compound mononocular microscope. You're looking for one that has 4X, 10X, and 40X objective lens. You're looking for a microscope with separate coarse and fine adjustment knobs and a good light source. The best light sources are LED or fluorescent bulbs. Do not get one with mirror illumination as they're very difficult to adjust. Most microscopes like this you can find for around $100 or less. But if you really can't afford a microscope, you can always Google the image you're looking for. Just type in the subject name followed by microscope image, and tons of options will pop that up for you to view. And if you want to get something that'll make it a little bit more fun, you can also get a palm-sized substitute. It's called a currency or a jeweler scope, and you can usually pick up one of those for between five and $10. So as you can see, even though we don't have access to a fully stocked lab, we can still provide a great science education for our kids at home. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Teaching Science at Home Show, which is sponsored by Elemental Science. In addition to making these great tips possible, Elemental Science also offers a full lineup of easy-to-use science plans for your home, co-op, or school. Head on over to ElementalScience.com to learn more.